owner of Far Point Farms here in the mountains of North Carolina. Today, I'm going to be assembling this. And this big box here is a Brindley lawn sweep, right? This is like one of these things that catches as you go by. You can pick up leaves with it. You can pick up grass debris, hopefully a little bit of small sticks, stuff like that. I have uh, graciously been given this by the Brindley Corporation. Brindley, thank you very much. I have uh, made a bunch of videos over the years of Brindley products because they're great products. And uh, wouldn't you know, they actually caught their attention and they contacted me. I am honored to be able to do a review on this. I have big plans for this thing, not just for sweeping the lawn, but I'm hoping to maybe make it a homesteader's paradise by being able to let the grass or the fields in the back grow really long, cut it, and then scoop it up with this and have the poor man's hay baler. So uh, we'll try that out in part three. But part one, tonight's video, we're going to assemble this big box here. This, uh, this thing's pretty large. Now, I don't know. I haven't ever opened it or anything. So I'm going to stop the camera. We'll lay everything out, read the directions, figure out what we're going to do. And uh, hopefully this will help you if you have bought one of these and are trying to figure out how to put it together. Okay? Let's get started. Okay, so all I've done, looks like the camera wasn't recording, so I'm just going to recap what I did here for this first step. This bracket here that you see mounted on here, it's just simple as four bolts. you got four uh, bolts going in there. Yeah, this is step two. This is your uh, lift handle, and I asked you just to put this piece on. What I was saying before, and I don't know if you caught it or not, so I'll go over it again real quick, is that just like the poly cart that I bought from Brindley a while back, everything is in order. you got all your nuts and bolts clearly listed what they are, and in that order, you're going to need to take them out of the box. So you don't end up with this huge pile of stuff that you just don't really know where it all goes. So really liking that. Okay, so let's move ahead. Go on to step three here. All right, this is, uh, this is a little bit interesting. I'm not exactly sure what they're getting at here, but I guess this is going to be an adjustment pin for this. So that's very interesting. Looks like this is going to lock through here. So that's going to go in there, and then you're going to have this nut and bolt. Get this thing set up right there. We go, and then we put that through there. Okay, I see. Interesting. Yeah, very interesting design. Always cool to see what the uh, engineers must have been thinking. You know, sometimes as a mechanic, we think about the engineers and it's not really in a positive light. It's a lot of times the engineers have uh, never laid hands on an automobile, and that can make it uh, frustrating when you're trying to work on cars, and obviously something could have been designed simpler. These, generally speaking, are very well thought out and designed. Any product like this that they're going to have a regular consumer putting together, they have to be well designed or uh, they're going to get a bunch of returns. They have to be fairly logical in the way that they get put together or, again, they're going to end up with a bunch of returns. So I don't uh, expect this to be difficult or confusing uh, any more so than, than really it needs to be. Go ahead here and start that. Go ahead and tighten that down a little bit. It doesn't say. So it's saying to tighten this somewhere. You know, obviously, you don't want it wiggling itself loose as uh, you roll down the road. But it does say you're going to be adjusting it because, look, I have to be able to pull that back in order to adjust the up and down. So if it's too tight, I can't pull this back, right? So that wouldn't work very well. Okay, final step. Cool, we're going to be at, wow, this thing moving right along here. I guess it looks like there's a lot of parts, but apparently there isn't because here we are. We've already used A and B. Now we're down to here. It's going to uh, have me install the, the rubber handle that's here. That's nice that it even includes that, really. So we'll slide that down on there. Okay. And uh, looks like we're going to be installing the... the uh, the actual arms, like the hookup for uh, for hooking it up to your tractor. So that's what these two bolts here and two lock washer or two locking nuts here below it. We're going to take those out of the box. And I love this. 
Too many times I've bought stuff uh, that needs to be assembled and it just comes in one giant bag. <coughs> so very uh, kudos to Brindley for that right there. Okay, so the next step is uh, to be attaching these pieces here. And uh, just one bolt, these are going to link up. This is going to be where you basically drag the machine from. Go ahead and twist this around until the holes line up. Okay, I'll go ahead and get it started. I won't tighten this all the way down until we have both sides on. Swing around this side and do the same thing. Again, I wouldn't tighten these down until we move on to the next step. Okay, so we've got those two pieces on there. Weight's going to want to drag this down. That's okay. Yes. Okay, so if you take a look at this piece right here, there's a bunch of different, there's eight, eight uh, holes here. So you have four positions, four heights, and uh, what's showing in the manual is depending on where you set the height is how low those brushes are going to dig into the grass to pull stuff up. So for right now, because I'm not really sure, I'm going to put it uh, in the number two slot there. Okay, so it's going to sit like that. So let me go ahead and get my pieces out. We'll tighten those down, and then we'll go back and tighten those other pieces down. We should be getting real close here because uh, there's not a lot of pieces to this mess. You know. Go ahead and lay those aside. Looks like we also are going to have our hitch pin, which is nice. It comes with a hitch pin and a safety cotter pin to go with that. So there we go. Get that out of there. Get my two nuts and bolts out of here. Get my little, there we go. Two of the lock washers and our pin. Very nice. So, just so I don't lose that, I'm going to go ahead and slide that in there. All right, now I won't lose that. Go ahead and get this thing lined up. Again, you can adjust this uh, at any time if you want to, if you find that it's you know, scalping your grass or digging too much stuff up or maybe not enough, you can make those modifications like that. going right on here. Hopefully you can see this pretty well. I've got the, got the uh, what I call the surging lights on in here. That way, that's just for when I'm rebuilding motors and stuff where uh, accuracy counts. I get the bright lights on here. To me, it feels like a surgeon's room is so bright. sections to go plus we got to assemble the wire frame around the bag so who knows could get more difficult we'll see so the next step is a uh, large shredded rod go ahead and get these two nuts for it out and there's the other so uh, we've got this large shredded rod right here and it's going to go see the flattened side here so it's going to go through there Sure that I'm not supposed to have those threads as a stopper. Yeah, good thing I read that again. Thought that didn't make much sense. If it had a collar, it would be. So they're just telling you to, these are kind of an adjustment rod apparently. So they want you to put it about halfway down and uh, then we'll 
slide that over there. And be the same thing with the other end here. And it's probably going to fall off on a little bit. But you can reassemble that. It's going to do the same thing right here. for the rest of this video, but it is the way it is. I want to make sure you guys are seeing what I'm doing. Okay, so what they're wanting me to do here <clears throat> slide this piece in. Hopefully y'all can see what I'm doing. If you have any questions about assembly on this mess, just get in touch with me. I'd be happy to help you out through uh, the messaging system here. Okay, and we got two more long pieces here. Make sure I put those in the right spot. These are going to slide up, looks like, through the holes themselves. Yep, so let's go ahead and thread that through there. This kind of, this part here reminds me of uh, putting up a tent. Which I was doing not too long ago. Same way. through there. Go ahead and hook these up. So, slide that through there. Same thing here. Great. Alright, time to take a look at the map again or the direction. See what else we got going on here. Good, good. It all looks good. All right, according to the manual, you got these two things, which are spring tension rods. 
somehow I know that we're going to have to install these. I've got to be honest, uh, I'm not 100% sure on this. Must go from there to there, I'm going to guess, but so we have to line up our holes first. Like one side. certainly works. All right, let's see what's next. Looks like we're going to be installing the rope and uh, handle through here. So there we go. Let's see here. Last step, we're going to take that threaded rod and connect the tops and the bottoms here. millimeter we've used for everything else. Yep. So we'll go ahead and tighten those down. I'm not out of parts yet, so there must be more to it. But we gotta be getting close. got these two pieces here and it uh, looks like pretty much the rest of the stuff that we've got right here taking out that long piece and that long piece looks like we're gonna need these rubber caps that are in here and what else are we doing here oh we need all 
four washers and the two lock washers and lock nuts. Okay. And it looks like these rubber caps are going to go over the large end here on each one of these two pipes. The idea with anything with a pivot point like this is you want to tighten it, but you don't want to, you don't want to squeeze down on it. You don't want to just have it snug, which is why it's a locking washer. Right? So that will allow it to move. I'm not going to go crazy and squeeze that thing too far. I'm going to repeat the same process on the other side. And it will be time once again to move on to the next step. it to the main unit. Last step, insert this down in here. Okay, you've got two more pins here to hold it all in place. After this, well, that'll be part two, because after this we'll make our final adjustments on the mower and we'll give it a shot. So, uh, go ahead and get these in here. We'll do a little wrap up on this. Huh? Not so bad, was it? If you're thinking about assembling this yourself, well, I'd say give yourself 45 minutes to an hour, which really isn't all that bad now, is it? operation works. <laughs> I'm Eric, the owner of Farpoint Farms here in the beautiful mountains of North Carolina. Once again, I want to thank the Brindley Corporation for sending me this to test out and uh, for maybe some unconventional uses for it. But you know, I, I showed how to use the moldboard plow in very unconventional ways in another video. Another fine Brindley product, by the way. And uh, I had no complaints about that. 
And a lot of people thought that that was helpful. So hopefully this will continue that trend. I'll see you again for part two. Until then, well, if you like the video, perhaps you'll think about liking and subscribing. I'll see you then. Take care. There's always something that needs a little fixing on Bar Point Farms. Freedom is mighty sweet.